patch notes. Okay, that's for uh, 1.2.3 being released on December 5th, 23. Let first let's first see how long it is, not much. All right. Gameplay update starting on December 5th. Battle Legions of Zeus minions and race against time in the new endgame Pinnacle Dungeon Abattoir of Zeus. So I'm probably gonna update my uh, build video for uh, this thing here. For more information, visit this article. We will go over it in a bit. Let's full screen this now. A full list of possible affixes can now be previewed in the en enchantment menu using a new view view possible affixes button i think this is a great addition but in general people should know what to expect from uh, different item types good to see them though earned glyph experience from most nightmare tiers was increased yeah this this is a good change i totally approve because Usually when I get to level 100, I have like 3 glyphs to level 15 and that's it. The rest I have to do after I get to 100 and how I usually do this, I usually run Nightmare, dungeon, nightmare Dungeons which are lower tiers, for example like 40. 40, 40 something where I can uh, easily pass through enemies or if I have to kill them I just uh, have a delete screen button like blood search or whatever. Uh, something which will enable me to just finish the dungeon in like 2 minutes or maybe 3 minutes to just get the glyph XP from the glyph stone. So yeah, size approves this change. Okay, really cool. Uh, after reviewing gameplay data and player feedback, we recognized that completing higher nightmare tiers was not as rewarding as we initially hoped for. Yeah, actually that's true. With many players stopping their journey after reaching tier 50, the experience increased to glyphs at higher tiers was made with the intent of incentivizing players to push their builds, making their arrival at tier 100 feel that much more fulfilling. Yeah, but like I said, I usually do it, uh, I usually level glyphs in uh, Nightmare Dungeons tier like 40 to 50, so I can just pass through enemies or kill them really fast, so I complete the dungeon in like 2-3 minutes not more. We will monitor how this change in experience pans out for players and encourage you to provide us with any feedback you have around the system. Yeah, definitely not going to level glyphs at uh, tier 100 because I believe it's gonna be a complete waste of time. Those are mm, not really meant to be speedrun. Why? Because, for example, in the Abattoir of Zir, we will have a timer and we will have to kill enemies, right? To keep up with this timer. And I don't really believe that's uh, possible with speedrunning where you only need to get to the Glyphstone. It's not really compatible, so... Introduce further support for NVIDIA Reflex technology, visit the in-game settings to enable this feature. I play on Xbox and on PlayStation 5, so I don't care about this. Let me know like in the comments if you uh, have any benefit from this. Bug fixes. Let's see. Fixed an issue where the screen reader didn't announce the required packs for vampiric powers okay fix an issue that made the screen reader malfunction on the steam deck hmm. 
I wanted to get a Steam Deck, maybe I will, but it's pretty much not a priority right now. I have two consoles, and getting a Steam Deck and buying the game for the third time just to play in bed, I don't know. <laughs> anyway, let's proceed with the patch notes and I will get back to playing again. Dungeons fixed an issue where the mechanical box wouldn't respawn if the player was killed by the boss in the Bastion of Fate. I don't know about this, I only play hardcore so can't really tell. Fixed an issue if the Fallen Temple dungeon where the objective to destroy the idol of the Fallen Temple could not be completed properly if the idol was destroyed instantly. I don't remember having this even on my strongest builds which can pretty much one shot anything. Um, and yeah, I don't know. Fixed an issue where the debuff effects in the Fallen Temple could be avoided when leaving and re-entering the dungeon. Yeah, okay guys, keep on exploiting the game so it eventually gets uh, gets to be better for everyone. Uh, again, thanks to the people abusing this. Uh, really cool. Fixed an issue where enemies from the Soul Survivor event could spawn behind locked doors in the Hallowed Ossuary, blocking event mastery completion. Yeah, this is... Uh, uh, Kind of an issue happening in many dungeons, uh, similar things were happening previous season, I'm glad they are uh, paying attention to this and fixing it. Fixed an issue where nightmare dungeons wouldn't properly reset after all revives were exhausted when playing local co-op. I only, again, I only play hardcore, played local co-op twice with a friend, he came to my place, but we again play hardcore, so revives. <laughs> uh, we don't care about this uh, pretty much. Fixed an issue where enemies spawned by animus carrying monsters with the summoner affix unexpectedly carried animals. Ah, I haven't noticed this. Didn't happen here, but I guess it's a good fix. Fixed an issue where bonus elemental damage affixes of Nightmare Dungeons scaled their damage too low or too high for their respective tier. Okay, this is gonna be interesting because, for example, um, the Fire Enhanced are extremely dangerous. Extremely dangerous, especially on high Nightmare Dungeons. And especially this season, if vampires spawn with fire enhanced affix, they are just insane. Especially if it's a rogue, because a rogue, vampire rogue is really, really fast. You can almost never escape it. And if it has fire enhanced, it's, <laughs> trust me, it's terrible. Uh, I almost died to something similar the other day. And I have a short about this in my on my YouTube channel, so you might want to check it. Actually, I went to I went through the fire on purpose just to test damage reduction, and uh, that evasion elixir didn't proc, and I'm so glad I had barrier. Would have died. Anyway, I think it was nightmare dungeon like. Um, 90 or 80 something not sure so probably higher tier no matter the barrier thing would have died I, I don't know why the that evasion didn't proc probably I didn't take enough damage I was testing damage reduction with uh, a different gear set that that I'm usually running the character with right now Gameplay. Fixed an issue where some attacks made by Echo of Lilith would not properly trigger if the player in the party that started the encounter died. Doesn't really apply here. I, I believe the Echo of Lilith is uh, 
very badly designed boss and a waste of time especially having in mind uh, that she has a really really high uh, one-shotting potential and doesn't really drop anything useful in game probably it's only good for bragging showing off showing off to friends and stuff like this i killed her already a couple of times and i don't intend on wasting my time there any further. I already have a platinum trophy for this game on PlayStation. So, I don't know. Until they make her drop something useful in the game, I'm probably not going there again. Uh, maybe I could go with the new glyph that we will be getting for the Abattoir of Zir. Because it will probably allow me to kill her with basic skill. That's maybe something I want to test, but... Pretty much, uh, I believe she's a bad design and waste of time. Not really re rewarding killing her. Doesn't really grant you anything. Anyway, let's move on. Fixed an issue where the first death from above cast by Echo of Lilith has irregular timing and didn't display an incoming project projectile indicator. Yeah, I was talking about something like this. And it... it Anyway, no further comment necessary, I guess. And okay, fixed an issue where Frostburn and Mother's Embrace could drop a sacred and not ancestral from Tormented Echo of Varshan and World Tier 4. Never had this. I think I have these as uh, sacred, but I don't think they came from Varshan. Fixed an issue where gems could still drop from some sources, such as Avarice Chest or Whisper Caches instead of Gem Fragments. Yeah, I, I made shorts about this. They also drop from corpses as well. Uh, like, if you walk in the open world and um, loot corpses and uh, sometimes uh, other interactables um, they can drop uh, gems instead of fragments so i'm glad that they address this fixed an issue where rabbis cast by werewolf companions from the of the alpha legendary aspect could miss <laughs> okay Druids, rejoice! Fixed an issue where Druids could continuously run into a wall if Trampo was used to move to, towards a nearby wall. It remind me of those Tusk Chargers running into walls instead of towards you. Fixed an issue where Treasure Goblins would sometimes become invincible and run away if the player mounted or Unmounted near them. Yes. Actually, I had this issue and um, I made a short about it a couple of weeks ago. You can check it on my channel. It's uh, quite obvious that it was a bug and people didn't really meet this uh, with the same feeling as I did. But I am glad that the developers saw this and uh, addressed it. I, I believe it could be actually my own report which triggered it because when I find bugs, which is usually at least a couple of them per day, I publish shorts on my channel so you might want to give me a sub for that at least. <laughs> anyway, trailer goblins have had enough of your bullying wanderer. Yeah, indeed. And not to mention they don't drop anything useful season of blood fixed an issue where blood harvesters i'm actually calling them vampires but okay blood harvesters disappear after spawning hey that's not an issue i want to have this i want to have this especially in the abattoir of zir so bring it back please um the way this could actually be achieved is when leaving the dungeon or if you go like far away from them they could disappear especially the rogue and the barbarian could be really challenging enemies 
and especially if there there are cannibals around them. Really tough, tough stuff. Uh, I'm talking about the highest nightmare dungeon tiers, of course. So, okay, fixed an issue where the Norvik, Norvik, whatever enemy could spawn repeatedly in certain co-op situations. I don't think we ever had this with my friend when we played co-op, but I guess it's a good fix. It's an issue where the seeds of hatred extracted by being haters chosen... Excuse me. ...did not count towards a season journey objective progress. Okay, weird. Um, fixed an issue which made potent blood drop from blood well inaccessible. Actually, I find this fix really childish because they didn't make it drop outside of the well near it, but they made the well uh, like um, you can pass through the well. I don't know if there's a adjective for this pass throughable or whatever let's make one why not uh instead of making it drop next to the well they let us just pass through the well i think that's a kind of a mediocre fix but i hope they address this in a more proper way it's an aaa game after all which costs a lot and they, I believe they should not get away with such blunt fixes, like such terrible fixes. Developers note, a previous hotfix allows players to walk through, yeah, to walk through blood wells to access potent blood. This change reverts the ability to walk through blood wells, but in exchange, potent blood will no longer spawn in the middle of the blood wells, so it can be easily picked up. What I was talking about without reading this. I didn't read this well. I was talking about it anyway. So they finally decided to um, meet our expectations. Like Blizzard quality, Blizzard polish. It is lacking in this game whatsoever. Fixed an issue where Duria wouldn't spawn when the player re-entered the boss arena after respawning. Someone dies on Duria? Okay. User interface and Uber uh, <laughs> user experience <laughs> fixed an issue where map overlays for Helltide and Blood Harvest wouldn't display properly when entering a region covered by Fog of War. Fog of War. But they removed Fog of War. I guess they're referring to if you go to the Helltide for the first time, if you've never been to the area. Okay. Fixed an issue where, where the tooltip displayed while hovering over certain items could blink periodically. I don't really have this on console, but I wish we had mouse and keyboard support because especially inventory maintenance and social features are incredibly terrible. I believe they should recognize this and that no one would wait for a console player to type a message with um, the virtual keyboard and a controller letter by letter. It's just terrible. Um, this also applies to this stash filter function, right? Fixed an issue where the Text describing how to unlock mounts was inaccurate for players who skipped the campaign. So how could you have this text if you skip the campaign? I mean, you get the mount in Act 4, I think, or end of Act 3, or wherever it was. If they choose to play through the campaign, players that haven't unlocked mounts... Must complete the Donan's Favor quest to unlock them. If the campaign is skipped, you must reach level 25 before unlocking mounts. Ah, okay, I didn't know this. That if you skip the campaign, you must reach level 25 before unlocking mounts. The two tip previously mentioned quest completion only, which is irrelevant when skipping the campaign. Okay, yeah, now it makes sense. 
Fixed an issue where navigating to the season journey from a seasonal aspect wouldn't open the correct chapter. Mm. Hmm. Okay. Navigating the seasonal stash season of stash with a controller will now be more consistent. What do they even mean? Uh, we don't have, for example, like on the inventory, if you go from the top right, and if you, like, move to the right, your selector doesn't appear on the left. Wait, uh, it's the other way around for you. I mean, I'm showing it correctly, but the webcam shows it different. Anyway, you get the idea. I hope it's this. Misk fixed an issue where visual effects on armor would remain fully visible while using concealment. Let it see so foolish wanderer. Ah, uh, yeah. And, okay, let it see so. Various visual performance and stability improvements. Okay, so... Basically, that's it. Nothing fancy here. Uh, let's see the... Abattoir of Zir, Rain and Blood, Abattoir of Zir. They didn't say much here, but let's read it through. On December 5th, descent into a most uh, brutal challenge from Zir himself. For those wanderers that have already completed the season's journey, this endgame Pinnacle Dungeon Challenge awaits you. You will have 10 minutes to slay the horrors within... And defeat Zir's loyal blood seekers to succeed. So there will be those vampires definitely inside. On completion of each trial, an event more difficult challenge awaits. An even more difficult challenge awaits. Prepare for the abattoir. Like I said, I'm probably gonna make a video on my uh, most played build and how on, how I changed it and prepared it for this. Ready your blades, blah, blah, blah. Should I even read this? I mean, it's, it's just fancy language for not many details. All right. Uh, players must have completed all chapters of the season journey first. Okay, that's important. I already did it. Before flaying, blah, 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 blah. Avatar will be hardest challenge you've seen in Season of Blood. Okay. The problem with this is that the game is not well balanced. Healing is almost not effective unless you want to increase your damage with the aspect of uh, untimely death. Which allows you to get more overpowered damage um, the more you heal above 100%. So pretty much most of the enemies either don't deal any damage to you or just a little or they have a one-shotting potential which is... Terrible design, guys. Come on. Terrible design. No matter, I mean, some things, no matter what kind of uh, defense you put, like uh, a lot of armor, if you have like uh, total armor on your uh, helmet, chest, pants, amulet, if you have uh, damage reduction on them and stuff, and even damage reduction when injured and barrier, some things can still one-shot you. No wonder we have the elixir of uh, death evasion on hardcore. Just because they can't balance the game yet. I get it that certain things can one-shot you. That's fine. As long as there is a way to counter it. Otherwise, it's just bad design, at least to me. So, we will have 10 minutes to clear enough enemies to summon the final Bloodseeker. So, the vampires will be the final thing and slay them to emerge bloodstained and triumphant and probably a boss after. Upon successfully completing each tier in the Abattoir Zir, you gain a recipe to craft the next tier's Blood Forge Sigil. Completing the first tier of Abattoir of Zir unlocks the unique glyph Tear, tears of Blood. Tears of Blood Glyph. So, I guess people should build uh, defensively. Get this glyph. So, make sure the tier 100 dungeon is something relatively easy. 
get this glyph, build defensively, and increase your damage with this. At, le at least that's my strategy. Otherwise, going full glass cannon is not gonna work unless you're in a group. And like they said on the campfire chat, if someone dies, if you play in a group, which I usually don't, and the run is ruined. So, you are as weak as your weakest uh, link, right? Anyway, upon successfully, blah, blah, blah. I think I already said this. The more you do, the more you will understand. Uh, yeah, almost. The Tears of Blood Glyph is essential to conquering the various... Uh, okay, so we're definitely gonna need this. What I plan to do is place it on a Glyph slot where I have the most defensive nodes, right? Armor, mostly, or something. We'll see. A high price is... Uh, okay, more, fun, more fancy language. Tears of Blood Glyph requires require significantly more experience to upgrade. Blah, yeah, yeah, we know this already. They said it last night. Fortunately, delving deeper into the Avatar of Zir can net tremendous sums of Paragon Glyph experience in return. So if you didn't really level any of your other glyphs, maybe that's a good time to do so. Otherwise, you waste hours and hours leveling them. Probably, yeah, a couple of hours. Descent to new depths. The first level in Avatar of Zir is similar in difficulty to level 100 Nightmare Dungeon. I think the scaling is like per four levels at once, as if four tiers at once, because it's only to tier 25. From there, endurance and cunning. Hmm? From there, endurance and cunning must be utilized. Cunningness, probably, was utilized for the vampire in trails to mark the evidence of your progress. Yeah, more fancy language for something which could be just simply put into an informative and uh, useful sentence, right? Each new tier strengthens the monsters that await, which only increases each time you descend further into the avatar. I mean... Come on, guys, I'm a linguist. This is obvious that they tried to make it sound fancy. It's not uh, just an uh, intelligent guest or uh, trying to sound like more team to the game and uh, to be gloom and dark and brooding or whatever. I, I think they really put some effort into trying to make it sound like this. Well, while it could be just more informative and shorter and anyway... Um, the blood, the blood port sigil and abattoir of Zir both go to level 25, uh, each increasingly more difficult than the last. I, I got disconnected, I guess, from the game. Anyway, ready yourselves, wanderer. Yeah, I told you, ready yourselves, wanderer. How many wanderers reside in you, wanderer? You have much to see. Like I said, anyway. They try to make it sound fancy, um, making mistakes on the way. Anyway, that's forgiven. I hope that uh, clears up everything we are to know for this uh, patch and the abattoir. Let me just uh, get rid of this browser here and let's get back to playing the game.